How's it going, boys and girls? Today is the start of our grand collab tour across the Americas, trying to collab with every YouTuber I possibly can. First up on the list, we are going to hang out with our friends over at Zen Habitats. I get to tour their facility, take a look at all the amazing stuff they're doing, and even do a video with them on their channel. So with all that being said, let's get ready to drive through Massachusetts. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Oh, fucking boy, nothing like driving in the great state of Massachusetts, boys and girls. Boston travel. You gotta love it. This is, this is supposed to be a two-hour drive. It's turned into a three-hour drive. <laughs> Welcome to Massachusetts, folks. PS is lost. Signal's lost. I'm stuck in a fucking tunnel. Dead stop traffic. There will be no further collabs in the state of Massachusetts. I cannot stand this state. A waste, it's a waste of space. It needs to be bombed. Well, let's see if I can figure my, my way out of this goddamn thing. Boy, out of the tunnel, into more traffic. Woo! Alrighty boys, after three hours of driving through that in awful, awful traffic, we finally made it. So let's check out the Zen Habitats HQ. God, please make this worth it. How's it going, boys and girls? I am here with the Zen Habitats crew, and we get to see a bunch of cool enclosures that I've never seen Zen Habitats be used like before that'll hopefully give me ideas to make more cool enclosures. Let's go check it out. You can leave this open. So, ta-da! Woo! <laughs> so... <laughs> My God, this is the first thing that I came to look at. This, boys and girls. This is all the one, two, what is this, four enclosures four, together? Four, four by two by fours to make one eight foot by four foot by four foot enclosure. This is really cool. What we got going on right so here? So here is our length extension kit. So we have put two four by two by two enclosures together to make an eight foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. And our inhabitant is a blue tongue skink named Cleo. Let's see if we can pull this baby out. Is she here? Is she right here? No, she's not. Yeah, that's gotta be the one problem having these absolutely massive enclosures is finding the little dudes in here. So a blue tongue skink, remember folks, is only gonna be somewhere around 24 inches in length. So he has all of this space, almost four times its body length to roam around, which is just absolutely fantastic. She is, and you can see the absolute, absolute unit that Cleo Holy, is. Holy, <laughs> maybe 24 inches was a little. So Cleo is a northern blue tongue skink and she is a unit. My God. <laughs> So she needed this eight foot enclosure for sure. <laughs> Definitely, look at that dude. <laughs> I like how you're using the, um, what is this, like an aspen bedding almost? I did aspen and cypress mixed together. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot easier. So I find that the biggest issue I have with my blue tongue skink is if you give them some hard and compact like most topsoils and things like that, because they have such these little, little hands, it's very difficult for them to dig and burrow down. So it's a lot easier with a substrate material like this to get the job done. Her fat face. <laughs> she do, she got a chunky face. <laughs> Of over here. Over here, I'm using this 4x2x2 four by two by two PVC enclosure as a greenhouse. Zen habitats can have humidity? <laughs> Say yeah. it ain't so. Oh, with our humidity shields, you can support up to 100% humidity in that bad boy. Wow, that's water. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. I didn't pass high school. <laughs> then this one is an enclosure that I'm super proud of. I stacked a four by two by two on top of a four by two by four. That makes make it six, six by two, but some four. <laughs> <laughs> so Ming is a captive bred Chinese water dragon. So we were hoping that she would be a little bit more chill than our wild caught guys, but she's still a bit spicy. There she is. She is our female water dragon. She's very, she wants to go away right now. You can see she's all wet because she just tried to dive away from me. Classic water Whoop. dragon. There we go, and that tail whip. Now they call these guys the poor man's iguana because you get all of the personality and the beautiful coloration of an iguana, but you don't get it in that six foot plus package. You get no. it in more around a three to three and a half. And her being female, she is a little bit smaller than our males. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you don't get that cool crest either, no. which is uh, more desirable. Mm. The egg incubation temperature determines the sex of Chinese water dragons. I didn't actually know that. I didn't know recently. that either. Yeah, so. 
I also don't breathe Chinese water. No, me, exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, in this little temporary setup, is your toke. <gasps> who is going to be getting the big house. So this is, you know, it's, it's pretty bare. It's just temporary, just for a little bit. And we will be building him a new enclosure. You guys can check that out on the Zen Habitats channel that we're gonna film right after I film my video because I'm more important than these people. <laughs> Yeah, really Bert, how'd you get Bert over here? <laughs> Bert's enclosure looks like shit. <laughs> um, so again, 90 um, for Krusty. So we were yeah. talking about this a little bit earlier, but um, basically, and I'm gonna talk a lot more, I'm actually gonna make a specific video about this, where I'm gonna be making some controversial takes, and this is definitely gonna be one of them about crested geckos and the care of crested geckos. Uh, we're gonna be talking about humidity and uh, heating is gonna be two big ones with any new Caledonia species. Everyone's always heard the saying, nothing over 80, it's gonna be bad. I think I actually said in my last care guide, which was silly of me, mm -hmm. but um, right here you can see a basting spot of 90 degrees. This crested gecko is thriving. And if you actually look at the temperatures that you'll find in New Caledonia, it does get this hot of an area. It's not just like the 70s all year round. Mm -hmm. You wanna spin right around. We have who started Zen Habitats. This is Chi. He is the reason we are a company. So he was Heidi and Randy's first bearded dragon. I'm sorry about that. Okay, cut that out. Um, this is Chi. He is, like I said, Randy and Heidi's first bearded dragon. When they bought him from the pet store, they ended up with a 40 gallon um, baby beardy kit and they realized he was absolutely miserable in it. Mm -hmm. He was glass surfing, he was just not thriving. So they created Zen Habit. They made a custom enclosure for him, a custom four by two by two, and then it turned into this whole company. Oh, How you doing? I'm sorry. I'm Joel with Easton Alarm Company. I'm okay. just here to do a quick test of the fire system. Um, so, anyways. Unbelievable. This is very unprofessional. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so distracted. Um, anyway. The unit of this bearded dragon is. Yeah, he's a big boy. They all make, these in habitats, they produce units of animals. <laughs> my, my love language is feeding. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I really like is that the fact that they are utilizing a four foot by two foot by four foot. Now we've been over this a little bit on the channel of how I personally believe that bearded dragons are not just a terrestrial animal, but can also be semi-arboreal. Out in the wilds of Australia, you will find these guys a lot on fence posts, large bushes, anything like that. And you can see they actually utilize that in a literal sense of putting an actual fence post <laughs> in this enclosure where the basking spot's gonna be at that highest point where the animal needs to climb on. Obviously over here with Rex, my bearded dragon, while we only utilize two feet of height, I noticed that she is much more likely to be on top of the little shelving background that I gave her versus being on the ground itself. Unbelievable. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> trying to set alarms during my video. It's like he doesn't know who I am. <laughs> I can't believe it. Alarm can go off. I, know, I, right? I don't know. <laughs> I hope it does. It'll be hilarious. Just add it. Add it. <laughs> I'm gonna do, it. do it for the gram. <laughs> I'm gonna start shoving people like out of my way. It's like a, with like a needle on the top. I don't know if he's gonna be poking like the alarms no. to no. test him. Well, we'll fine. find out. Just light, they like light something on fire real quick and. <laughs> Uh, yep, it works. Oh, and they call it the gel. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> now they got all these fancy tools, unfortunately. Yeah. Beautiful example of a normal. You don't see normal leopard geckos very often anymore. No, you don't. There's one more for another mixed into it. I really like these backgrounds you guys have. Oh yes. I built mine myself, but it it don't look as fancy as these right here. I'll tell you that I right mean, now. These are really great. They're like solid. Eyes. My God! <laughs> Look at this thing. Hang on, let me pan out. Woo! That's a big dragon right there. Well, we still have Rosie, the Tegu, but the Because other again, four enclosures <laughs> make a double glass, which really makes a really nice viewing area. Yes, absolutely. Where are you? You see, folks, this is why I keep everything in a 10 gallon enclosure. Uh, it's all for the content. We don't get these brief pauses because I know where they are because they only fit into the size of the enclosure. It makes it real easy to find them. Gone are the ways of natural enrichment and mental stimulation. Uh, it's all about the content right here. Oh. <laughs> I missed it. No. <laughs> that was way better than my stupid spiel. Dang it. <laughs> All right, here she is. 
This is Minnie. <laughs> She's absolutely gorgeous. She still has a lot of growing to do, but oh my God, I love this snake so much. Fun it's fact, I actually, back when I was breeding snakes, I wanted to do a Brazilian rainbow project. Yeah? I just, just take a look at that. What I really love about them is the pattern, the iridescent scales that you can see, especially under some nice UVB lighting. It's really gonna make it pop. Mm -hmm. I just love the eye spots down the sides. Oh, they're just. They're also feisty, which is right on brand for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is Ollie. He is our Chihuahua. Oh. Or, um, do you say Chihuahua or do you say. Because of the mossy giant gecko or something? Yeah, the mossy prehensile tail gecko. My prehensile tail. Mm hmm. So. Take a look at this guy. Pine Island, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. based on the coloration. Yeah. And then, so they got that prehensile tail. Um, but yeah, look at these really cool. You get a nice white collar. Mm -hmm. Very desirable trait. <laughs> it kind of looks like my male, but like an upgrade. So my male's very green. He's mm -hmm. mostly green, mm -hmm. but you have all these nice of the white highlights, mm -hmm. which really makes it a it's, really nice male. Yeah, it's I find with Chihuahuas is gonna be, they have such small egg clutches, only getting somewhere around four to six eggs a year, which comparatively speaking um, to the other New Caledonian stuff, it's gonna make it a lot less of a viable project, but still absolutely love them. We have our pair over there and we'll be breeding them again here actually next week, I believe. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Probably like a tree frog enclosure. Um, all three of them are sleeping on that wall right now. <laughs> in a row. Just... And that's what you get with red eye tree frogs. That's. <laughs> everyone, when I used to have red eyes, everyone was like, oh my God, I love red eyes. And they were a little dream species when I was a child. So I got them and I had them for a little bit and I was like, this is the most boring frog. This is literally, you never, you will never see them awake. That That's literally, they do that. Unless you're up at like three in the morning and happen to walk out there, you get to see them. Other than that, you never will. But Dakota, I have a secret. Does it have something to do with this weird glass? Yes! <laughs> no, um, so because they're a nocturnal species and I wanted to observe them, I, flipped their light cycle. So their lights actually go on at seven o'clock at night and turn off at 7 a.m. So when I come in at 7 a.m., these guys are all over the place and I can see them through the red door and they think it's dark, but it's like I can observe them and stuff and it's really cool. But they're sleeping right now. Yeah, right now. <laughs> well, what time do they wake up? They're gonna wake up tonight or in the morning. I'm I don't know. So <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know. They Sometimes they're awake when I come in at seven o'clock in the morning, though, and they're croaking and doing all their cute little froggy things. I'm still not up at seven in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you got a better chance of me finding them at three a.m. Than, than seven a.m. Fair. Two by four is for our ball python chip. So he utilizes this entire enclosure. Um, I was in a, uh, a Facebook group once long ago, and I believe it was ball pythons enthusiasts or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I made a joke saying ball pythons don't climb. And I got, well, I got banned eventually, but they muted me, they talked a bunch of shit about me, and then they banned me. So. Ball pythons climb. Take that admin of that Facebook group I can't remember. They do climb, checkmate. It only took me two years to <laughs> get you back. Yes. You wanna show? No, you can go on the floor. That's fine, too. I'll just drop the snake. It's fine. <laughs> okay, good boy. I mean, she drops it, but they give it height, so... <laughs> There's push and pull with everything. Yes. Um, is, that, is that a leap light? It is a leap light. It's a collaboration? Um, yeah, we were really good friends with Leap. <laughs> I asked Leap to sponsor me, and they said no. Oh. <laughs> and said, so, well, screw you, I'm gonna go with Zen, Whoa. or stick with Zen, and now they're collabing. <laughs> this puts me in a very awkward place. You like how that works. All right, I'm standing, I don't know if you want to try to get your camera in there, but she's in this back corner. She is a very inquisitive little corn snake, and she'll probably come sniff you. Maybe. Squeak, 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 squeak. See, that's the sure proof, you know, they're not feeding live over here. <laughs> that squeak would have sent, it was a perfect imitation of the real thing, would have sent her flying over here, and yet she is scared of the squeaks because she doesn't understand it. I do her frozen She's ball. running away from me. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no. I don't know, some joke about me being fat. 
It's, it's something there, I just, I don't know. <laughs> Up. Hopefully it didn't cut out too much. We have a couple. We're in another office now. We have, we actually we have one more friend that I did not remember. Oh, I didn't see this one yet. This is Butters, he is our axolotl. Oh my God. <laughs> He's a unit, <laughs> again. I'm telling you, man, Zen Habitats produces units of animals. I've ever seen an axolotl? Well, I don't think I've ever seen an adult axolotl. Oh, really? So maybe I just don't know what the size comparison is. Yeah, about 10, 11 inches. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have two more Zen pets. Our next guy is Kenny the Panther Chameleon. So he's up there just chilling right now, laying, this, laying out. Doing his thing, being a happy boy. Beautiful panther. You guys have not one, but two UVB bulbs. One is actually LED plant bulb. Ah, <laughs> I need the glare to see when you <laughs> it. We have Theo, who is our newest inhabitant. He is an African side neck turtle, and he is in what we're calling the Zen Aquarium. So. You guys don't know what I'm talking but just talking about, but let me back up. What is that? Water. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's water. So we put a 120 gallon fish tank on the floor. Then we put a deluxe stacking spacer on top of that. Get this. Look at the size of this cork. This is the first thing I said. I said, Jesus, that's a big cork log. <laughs> it starts there, goes all the way up. They got that middle spacer to hold it up. And then there's Comes a little up. spot that he can run into and go down. Mm -hmm. They also have lighting over here as well, so it keeps it nice. Mm -hmm. You got the nice brackish water mm -hmm. that the logs are all contributing to. Very mm -hmm. realistic. Yep. I see I see a snail, I believe. Yep, we got a mystery snail over here. We got some guppies. Um, and there is a big old pleco somewhere in there. Alrighty, boys and girls, what a fantastic little tour of Zen Habitats. I now get to build an enclosure with free labor in order to come here and you'll be able to check that out on the Zen Habitats channel. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.